So my name is Emily Grant. We're here at Kodrochi Farm. Um, this is just outside of Perth. This is a reasonably small unit. It's 30 hectares, forage only. So there's only grassland here. And I, this is a sheep only system. And previously used to run about 250 breeding ewes, but now contract rearing rams. So there are about 150 ram lambs come here um, ready for prep as for sale as shearlings. So multi-species swords, yeah, it's just almost as the name suggests, these are swords that have many species within them. Um, so historically here we were, were ryegrass and white clover and um, probably also some timothy within that as well. But over time we've tried to incorporate um, more herbs within this. So the herbs are species such as plantain and or chicory. Um, and we've introduced those to try and provide more benefits to the farming system. So no external inputs here, so there's no fertiliser, there's no artificial nitrogen. We rely on clover to be able to provide some of the productivity of nitrogen and there's no spraying and because we're a pasture-based system, other than a bit of forage crop now again, there's, there's no other production within here. So to try and make the most out of um, the system without inputs, it's one of the reasons to draw us towards mixed species swords. There's, there's kind of multiple benefits to potentially come out of them. One is, one of my focuses here as well is particularly about soil health. I think it's really important. This field in particular is quite gravelly. Um, so we want to, and historically this was arable field before we, we came here about 20 years ago. So still at the stage of wanting to, to build soil carbon. So hopefully it's going to help doing that. But also I want to make sure that that biology, the soil biology is really functioning well. So because I'm not not relying on inputs, we need to make sure that that system is functioning as well as possible. So having those mixtures of plants, and particularly we've been quite dry here now, a lot of the grasses have really, it's been hard not to let them go to head. So a lot of these herbs, particularly the chicory and the plantain, are, are working really well at this time of year. So this is their main growing season, um, but they're also slightly better adapted to, to growing in these slightly drier condi conditions. And also other plants such as plantain is, um, a really good plant for lifting phosphate so it forms quite strongly with fungi within the soil to lift phosphate. So the soil benefits um, but also there are livestock benefits too so these plants are really highly digestible um, so in, they should be able to give us really high growth rates they're really palatable the sheep actually want to eat them and also there's a good mineral content in some of these plants so particularly um, chicory and plantain would tend to have higher selenium contents the clover higher cobalt content than just ryegrass alone um, we're not too bad for minerals selenium and iodine are low here that's a known um, issue that needs to be addressed. Cobalt I'm marginal but I think that clover helps keep us ticking over and plus the sheep actually want to want to eat um, these herbs as well so we make sure they're kind of coming through there. Um, and there's also yeah the other potential benefits in terms of production is some of the other plants particularly bird's foot trefoil and, and red clover are really good in order to get protein in and they also have and the chicory as well have an anthelmintic um, benefit i.e should reduce reliance on wormer and that's quite a key aim for me i i have a pretty unique system in that i have um ram lambs coming here at the same time every year and there are no adult stock here anymore to be able to tidy up worms so that was a key driver to put these um, plants in was so that I'm able to reduce my reliance on wormer because I'm I'm conscious it's the the one chemical input that I do have on this farm so if we can use these plants to help reduce that reliance on wormer as well to me that's a, an, another positive benefit so yeah, really in summary, they, they, they are here for a multitude of reasons. Um, um, and I think it's working reasonably well, but they do have challenges in managing them. Since putting these mixed species swords in, I'm certainly seeing benefits in biodiversity. Slightly taller, so there's certainly, there's lots of skylarks nesting. We're seeing a lot of pollinators at this time of year now that these legumes are flowering. And also I've been leaving uncut areas um, in the field here. So we've got some really nice structure and flowers in there for, for pollinators and insects. Managing mixed species wards, yeah, is, is certainly a little bit trickier than it is with just a ryegrass and white clover. I suppose I'll start first with grazing system. So they really need to be rotationally grazed. So particularly the herbs, they, chicory has a really good taproot. Um, and 
plantain not so much of a taproot, but just the way they, they store their energy um, and their recovery from grazing is totally different to ryegrass. So on a ryegrass white clover at this time of year, you'd probably be on 21 to 26 day rotation under a, a, a more intensive grazing system. Um, here, you definitely have to leave that longer. Those plants need much longer to put more leaf area back up. Um, so certainly in New Zealand, they would suggest you, you need at least six to eight leaves before you're um, going back in and grazing. So here, this has been this was actually cut for silage. It wasn't intended, um, but it did get away from me. So this has been cut for silage, and we're now a month after silage cut, and it is ready to regraze now. The birdsfoot trefoil is quite a tricky one as well because it doesn't have a huge root energy reserve, and it also only has a small number of leaves on top. So if you graze that too heavily it loses its ability to either to re replenish its root reserves or to be able to, yeah, to photosynthesize effectively. So you need to be able to not graze too heavily, particularly for the bird's foot trefoil, if you want it to persist um, as you go through. And then it has the ability to, to be able to spring back up again here. I'm surprised how much bird's foot trefoil I've got here because it was also, it's well known for being A, difficult to establish and B, difficult to maintain. But I, I just think that perhaps those longer rest periods really do make a difference here. Um, yeah, so they're, they're challenging. The clovers generally are pretty similar to how we would manage in a ryegrass um, and white clover system. So white clover is really tolerant of a lot of grazing. So yeah, super easy plant. Um, and the red clover as well will take a degree of grazing, but again, it's, it's probably better to have a little bit more height on it before you go in to graze. So it, the red clover fits nicely into this system. Persistency. Yeah, I mean, most of the production of these plants happens in the summertime. Um, so the way I see them working is, yeah, grass growth in early spring is those the grasses will kick in a lot earlier. So we do have a little bit more grass. And I have noticed actually that the, the sheep will preferentially graze the grasses in the very early stages of spring. And then as we move through the season, those grasses become a little bit less palatable as they're starting to look to, to put stem up and to, to put seed head up. And this is where all these herbs really kick in. So as summer production, yeah, they, they really fit the bill. But the downside is they're much less um, active. So they're not really winter active plants. Um, and I think for that reason, I would, I would never put the whole farm into a mixed species lay. I would always make sure I've got some um, ryegrass and or timothy and white clover systems to, to, or a forage crop um, to be able to, to give them that good long rest period over the winter, allow them to replenish their root reserves um, and yeah, and not be out competed because the other downside is all our, most of our grasses, and depends on the winter, but the grasses are generally winter active, whereas the, the herbs and some of those clovers, even clo red clovers, not particularly winter active either. So we kind of need to be staying off in the winter. The rest period is the, the key thing that you, you need to change if you're going to be um, using these kind of swords, I think. So um, I'm trying to leave, obviously that rest period varies according to the time of year you're at, but you know, this is 30 days since I've last, well, it was actually cut since it was last cut. Um, so it's ready to graze now. Um, so you're on a slightly lo longer rotation than you would be in a ryegrass and white clover mix. Um, and then obviously as the season progresses, you're gonna lengthen that rest period. Um, you generally find that the herbs, if, you, if you've got quite a long rest period, the herbs still remain reasonably palatable, but I think you can hit a point where when there's a lot of stem and a lot of seed head that actually you lose that palatability as well. So you don't want to have too long a rest period, particularly in the summer. The chicory is going to have a little bit of head. It already is standing here in front of me so we're already but that's still reasonably soft that stem and I know the sheep will will eat that just now but but that's the real challenge is all the different species are all working slightly at different timings and um, so you need to just be adjusting as you go through I do daily shifts here and um, because it works for me I've got a reasonably easy system to set up for daily shifts and I think that works quite nicely I can try and get a reasonably good clean out but also your residual is important. So I'm not going too low on that residual, not 
you know, I'm going, aiming for probably at least six centimetres, four centimetre, four to six, or, or in a more conventional ryegrass system, I think you're just, you're really at risk of grazing out things like the bird's foot trefoil, where you need to leave a bit of leaf on top as well. Um, so you need to, yeah, you're going in taller and you're coming out taller than you would on the standard ryegrass white clover. So ryegrass, I've um, avoided having ryegrass in here um, mostly because it's a reasonably competitive plant and I think that's one of the reasons that, that people struggle with persistency of their herbal lays is that the ryegrass is really competitive um, and also it's winter active when the herbs are less active they're not really growing much over the winter um, these grasses can be a little bit competitive from so this is my trial of no, no ryegrass in this mix. This field's very much been a focus of um, trying how can I manage to to maintain persistency because obviously it's there's a reasonable cost in in the seed and getting this established so how can we make sure that it lasts as long as possible so um, last summer again I'd actually cut for silage um, partly because it got away from me and I opted after silage cut to leave it to set seed um, to see if that's a way that I can build up a seed bank of all these species so that over time even though the plants maybe aren't have a shorter lifespan because the seed banks there I can actually maintain a mix of these speeds in uh, a mix of these species in here so it seems to have worked reasonably well with the caveat that we've we've had a pretty good winter so it wasn't quite such a hard winter um, and no kind of real horrible spring late frosts or the kind of thing that that might impact on it Plantain, definitely there's a lot of plantain seed in here um, and some of the clovers, particularly red clover. There's also some chicory. I was quite surprised to see chicory come through there. I think the kind of seeds that all the species that suit allowing it to seed are the real hard coated seeds that will survive a winter. Um, so I think, yeah, the plantain and the clovers are really good for that. I'm not sure if there's any new, it's really hard to tell if there's any new bird's foot trefoil within there. Um, but one of the real downsides of doing this is that you obviously need to leave a period of time for the flowers to set pods or to set seed and then for that seed to be mature enough so that when it falls it's, it's going to germinate. So it does mean that your, your field is out of production um, for a, a reasonable amount of time. So I'm not sure just exactly where that balance is between do you just go with the species that you planted with and just accept that over time you're not going to have um, as many of those herbs within there or is that extra couple of months that I've allowed it to set seed is that worthwhile in the longer term of having a slightly more persistent pasture um, so time will tell I'm going into year three and um, there are less herbs but I think compared to others that I've seen I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable um, with what is here um, but it's just going to be a case of, of watch it and see and just see how the seasons progress so quick summary of the benefits, I think a big biodiversity benefit tick, it's definitely seeing a difference in, in this field. There's a lot of pollinators and birds within here. Um, stock love to eat this. I think I'm, I'm getting really some good production as well, but the stock find it really palatable um, and love coming on here to graze. Um, and also, yeah, it's just helping me to keep my inputs to a minimum. Um, if, if that is via reduced, well, I don't use nitrogen anyway, but keeping um, fertilizer to minimum, keeping wormer to minimum. Um, and also ideally, if we can provide a mineral base as well with the higher mineral content of those plants, that's what it's all about. I think if anybody's thinking about incorporating multi-species swords, I think, yeah, just a little bit of planning. Um, I think how you can graze it. So as I said, ideally, you really need to be on a rotational system. Um, I think as well, though, the benefits it can bring you um, can outweigh some of those, those key challenges. But I think most importantly, just give it a try. See what works on your farm because every farm's gonna be slightly different. Mm -hmm.